What's going on everyone? Happy Wednesday. I hope you guys have all been having an amazing day, but I'm going to go ahead and break down exactly how my trades ended up going and how the market ended up reacting to that FOMC rate hike decision, right? So let's get right into it. And as you guys can see, right, it was a red day overall on the account, a pretty decent one. So I ended up giving back, you know, a lot that uh, my account did make yesterday, right? And so in terms of how I did day trading wise, I only traded SQQQ. And as you guys can see, I lost $81 right and I was using 30k so overall I think I did a good job of managing my risk but there was definitely lots of opportunity to make money right and I I just really you know want to go ahead and break down my mistakes that I made so hopefully you guys can go ahead and learn something from it but as you guys can see I had way too many orders today right uh, like you can just see this number and tell that I over traded right and so I started trading at 6:30. Right, and I didn't stop trading until, you know, 10.51. So I was taking a few trades to close it out, right, while I was at work. But um, to be honest, for the most part, right, I ended up just finishing right around 9.45. So I definitely traded for a while, right, traded for over three hours today. And, you know, I wasn't able to really make the most of it. So let me go ahead and break down exactly what my mistakes were. But in terms of what I actually was looking at and what my game plan was, Right, I saw that the Nasdaq overall during the pre-market session, it started to gap up a bit, right, and started to trade, you know, closer towards the top VWAP. And so once I saw that, right, I did see that on the bigger time frames, we were, you know, um, we were, you know, approaching previous resistance levels. So it made sense to me why we could potentially get rejected, right, right around these areas. And so as you guys can see, right, the past few days, it's been a really consistent rejection point right let me go ahead and zoom on out so you guys get a better view right of what i'm saying right so as you guys can see we have been gapping up nicely and this general area acted as a resistance and so we as we were trading closer you know to the top of it i thought we were going to potentially get some form of correction right so that's why i started to focus on sqqq today right from the market open right i just wanted to wait for the Nasdaq to push up, gap up, become overextended and start to fall. And so that's ultimately what I ended up doing, right? As you guys can see, market open, right? And it pulled on back to the middle view while bounced, right? And started to push up a bit. So it was trading, you know, pretty sideways, pretty choppy, right? Not the most consistent direction and what actually ended up happening. It ended up shooting up nicely. And right around this area, right? I ended up getting into SQs again, right? So I would constantly, anytime this thing would start to push down, be getting into SQQQ but as it would start to push back up I would need to cut losses right it would push on down I would be up money and then as it changed direction I would end up giving it back so it started to do to do that right throughout the whole morning and so as you guys can see it would push up um, become overextended and once it did start to sell off I would get into SQQQ only for it to make a new high right a new and have a new leg up and so once I ultimately did see this thing start to sell off right you guys can see, right, it was pretty repetitive today. I would get into SQs, make a lot of my money back, right, that I was digging myself in from these losses here in the change of direction. And what ended up happening, so it sold off to middle VWAP and did it again, right? So it ended up changing direction. I was honestly expecting it to sell off around this area because of the fact that we were heading closer to the meeting at 11 o'clock, right? And I thought that just the fear and uncertainty of what was going to be, you know, predicted could potentially drive it down before the um, report even came out. But that's not what ended up happening. It actually shot up. The report came out, right? The Federal Reserve ended up raising interest rates by 0.25% as expected. And so the market ended up, you know, pushing up. It was trading pretty sideways. But what actually ended up happening, I unfortunately wasn't, you know, able to take part in this. But I would have loved to have been at my computer, right? Because of the fact that on the bigger time frames, right, we're at a, a critical resistance area, right, where we've previously got, have gotten rejected around these areas very aggressively. And so it, it made sense to me why if we pushed up around these areas, there could be a quick shift in direction, right, to validate this rejection here. And so ultimately, you know, ultimately what ended up happening, this thing ended up pushing up, peaking out, and man, did this thing sell off, right? Within a matter of, you know, minutes, this thing went from, highs of 1382 to lows of 12 of 12,817 right so that's you know a really really nice move if you got in from top to bottom right in the inverse ETF that would have been 
almost 6%, right? Just to put it in perspective. And so once it bounced, pushed back up, guess what ended up happening again? It made a lower high, right? And this thing ended up shooting down, right? Even more aggressively than the drop it had before. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to take part in any of this, but if you guys were, you know, um, betting on the NASDAQ falling today, then congratulations on that because those were really, really nice moves. And so as far as what I see going on, right, for, with the NASDAQ overall, we are validating this rejection. Now, it, it's just a matter of, you know, are we going to test this EMA and start to push up again, right? So if we do end up breaking below the EMA, as you guys can see, as, we, as, well, as we've done previously, we end up ga gapping back up, right? So anytime we push down, we'll see if we do break below the EMA, if we're able to start to gap back up. But if this thing does break below and start to validate this resistance, right, we could see a shift in direction of the market. So we really want to follow up with it and, you know, take it day by day. But that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about with you guys, right? It's really important to just be aware that we are at this critical resistance area because if the market does start to fall, right, then, then you know, it's not good news for, you know, any long-term stocks in general. But day trading wise, right, it would provide a good opportunity to get into SQQQ, but we'll just see what ends up happening, right, leading into the rest of the week. But thank you guys so much for tuning back in. It really means a lot to have your support. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and drop a comment and I will be more than happy to answer it myself. But other than that, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's recap. Take care and have a good rest of your day.